God, the students out here have been so great. There's no way I could have done this without their help. We filled the boards in record time and hit the road. I don't know if it's luck. I may have willed it to stop raining, but somehow the weather cleared up and it's beautiful. We set up on the jetty with downtown Honolulu across the bay. The install is going great. I couldn't have asked for a better location. And then, fireworks began. On a scale of 1 to 10, this install just went from a 10 to a 15. We've been talking about this for months. I can't believe it actually happened and it couldn't have gone off any better. It was an amazing group of people helping me out and uh, it just came out so beautiful. Our flight leaves for Maui at 7.55 tomorrow morning. I'll be meeting up with a friend and fellow glass artist, Kim, as well as an underwater photographer and a well-established local painter. It's uh, 7.48 and uh, I thought we were supposed to be leaving at 7.55, but that was our arrival time. Really, we were leaving at 6.55, so we missed our flight. And now we're waiting for the next flight. And I got a big bug bite on my leg. A giant one with a massive bug. I'm pretty sure it's that bug's fault we missed our flight. We're finally back on track on our way to Maui. We arrive and an old friend of mine, Sam, picks us up and takes us to Kim's studio. Since we got there late, the class has already started. Kim's studio primarily teaches glass fusing to Maui locals and tourists. Today she brought in John Lindquist to do a special lamp working demonstration. If you can't tell yet, he's making an octopus. Once John finishes up, the class gets back to their fusing projects. I knew I was going to come over and open a studio, and Bullseye Glass approached me. They asked me if I would consider opening over here. And I'm the sole distributor of glass art supplies in the state of Hawaii, and I sell kilns and everything else, which is really fun. I'm setting up a structure of classes that are here for visitors, half-day classes when it's raining or people are sunburned, they can come in the studio while they're here on island. I also do open studio time and allow local people to come in and do glass on an ongoing basis. I help them with their, their projects. And I just am really looking forward to getting more and more and more of this creative spin going in the studio. People coming in for the first time doing glass. The pieces they're doing are amazing. There's a difference when an artist owns a gallery, because I really care about the art that my artist makes. Mm -hmm. And I know the artist, so there's a lot of backstory that I can present to clients on their behalf. And the other great thing is, is I just get a represent artist I believe in. And so people like John Lindquist and Jeanette Howard mm -hmm. and Guy Yunker and the Mazze Studios and world-renowned glassblower Charles Lowry. Um, some really amazing artists who I know and know their work and it's a great opportunity to represent them. After the class we cruise down to the beach. First day in Maui has been amazing. Tomorrow's the last day. I'll be meeting up with an underwater photographer and a local artist. Kim and I head out to meet up with underwater photographer Jeanette Howard at her house. I've been diving for a number of years and I've always been fascinated with underwater photography. Needless to say, I'm excited to talk with Jeanette about her work. Hi. Hi, Jeanette. Yeah? It's nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you too. Welcome in. Oh, Welcome thank on you. In. It was such a nice day out. We decided to take a walk. So, Jeanette, how did you get started uh, taking photographs underwater? 
Well, I started just diving and looking at it all, and then I was working with Wyland. Um, I was fortunate enough to get to go diving with him, and I would find an animal, but I'd come over here, take a picture. So just watching him do photography, and just having that desire, like, hey, I should get a camera and try it. And what's one of your favorite things to shoot while you're underwater? Um, well, I like everything. I like small little tiny things from pygmy seahorses to clownfish to gigantic humpback whales are one of my favorites. Whales, dolphins, uh, color, the lighting. I just love blue lights streaming through and looking at colors of the reef. It's just, um, I like it all. The trick with underwater photography really is to get close uh -huh. and you're shooting through a lot of blue and you're not going to get a good photo unless you're close. So. Um, you put your eye on the camera and swim up close, get the shot, and when you put your eye off the camera, you're like, ah, oh my God, I'm scared, it's huge. So sharks are, you know, intimidating. Whales, they won't hurt you on purpose, but uh -huh. it's intimidating swimming with the animals. <laughs> well, I've been to Fiji, Palau, Tonga, Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands, the Red Sea, wow. Indonesia, Philippines. Yeah. Each place for a different reason, like I'll learn that Oh, the Philippines has seahorses, and um, Indonesia has mola mola, or you know, the whales swim in Tonga on these certain times. So I just have a gigantic hit list. I really take photos for myself, and I know that people like dolphins and turtles always sell, but for me, what I like, it, it's when it's challenging. So, for example, the last dive I was on in Indonesia, they have this little tiny, tiny animal like a little ladybug, it's as small as a flea. I had to dive probably five dives for over an hour each time just to get that shot. And when I get that shot, I, I don't know that anybody else will like it, but <laughs> I love it. I was really impressed by Jeanette's photography and the length she's willing to go to for the perfect shot. We head back to meet up with Guy Yunker, the last artist we'll be covering on this trip. From what I hear, he has a lot planned for us. Something about a rope and a girl, I'm not quite sure. Hey, Guy. Hey, how's it going? Good to see you again. Yeah. Thanks for inviting us back to your studio. Yeah, great. Cool, yeah, let's, so yeah. let's go check it out. Right, come on up. Guy Yonker is a talented artist working in multiple mediums, including painting, photography, and sculpture. Guy draws much of his inspiration from Japanese and Hawaiian culture. He's a student of Iaijitsu, a form of Japanese swordplay developed for the daily life of a samurai rather than battle. Now, let's get to the rope in that girl. Uh, we're going to be working on a little bit of a shibari, uh -huh. um, which is a Japanese style of bondage mm -hmm. with our model Rose here. How do you incorporate the shibari into your work? Um, well, I usually I'll photograph uh, the, the work after I'm, I'm done with it. Um, so the rope work, um, and then I'll use those photographs to make paintings and also um, some digital images as well. Go for it. I okay. can't wait to see. So the rope I'm working with here is hemp. And what you want to do is find the middle of the rope. Uh, the Japanese shibari works by using the middle of the rope as a starting point. Started from hojujitsu, which is a style of uh, martial art, basically using rope and cordage to uh, bind a prisoner. So here's a two column bind, so basically when you're referring to limbs, or it could be uh, uh, posts, uh, it would be a column. So this here is going to be a, a butterfly knot. And this tie was uh, sort of invented by the Naughty Boys. They're a group, two guys that uh, work in a fusion style of uh, bondage. So again, these are all overhand knots, which just continue down. And where'd you learn how to do this, guy? Um, from books and online. We don't have a uh, shibari teacher here on Maui, unfortunately. What's been the response when uh, you started showing these first few shibari paintings? Um, it's been good. Uh, surprisingly good. I was a little more I was apprehensive about how it was going to be received, but um, it, it's interesting seeing people's reactions, and especially couples, and where one person will be really excited by it and the other person will look at him and I can't believe you're into that. And so, and well, you two will have something to talk about when you go to the hotel room tonight. So. <laughs> now you can see her 
her bindings from her ankles are now bound to her, her arms here, so she can't stand straight up. So she's in that position where she can't come all the way up. And again, a coin knot here. And this is a dragonfly sleeve here. That was awesome. But this trip is starting to wrap up. Before it does, we're heading to the beach for a farewell barbecue. Open your mind and look within. That's the way you live in. We get the coal started, and then Guy and I take a walk so we can discuss his work. Yeah, I find it fascinating that you make a living from your artwork. Um, has it been a long process to, to make a good living from your artwork, a slow process? Well, the, the fine art uh, takes a, a lot of time. Petroglyphs are, are common to a lot of native cultures. So it's interesting seeing uh, the similarities between the cultures. Right now, I really enjoy the spoon painting because it's new to me. And, yeah. And it's, it's very spontaneous. And when you're up close, it's abstract. When you get back further away, um, everything comes into focus and you can see the reality. And then when did you first start working with stone? Uh, the stone, I was in a Home Depot actually and I saw a, a, a case of uh, slate and so I said maybe I can make something with this. So I bought it and I, I wound up breaking most of the tiles trying, <laughs> trying to work it. But uh, after researching a little bit about sandblasting and etching, uh, that, I developed a system to, to be able to put my images into stone. And you use some really interesting canvases. Yeah, those are actually done on wooden panel. So I use a type of uh, uh, bendable uh, veneer wood, which comes from Italy. And when you put two pieces together uh, and glued together, they hold its shape. So that way I don't have to steam it or do anything like that. And I find it interesting that you're not afraid to take risks with your artwork and uh, to uh, you're not afraid to fail. You're not afraid to try new things. Do you think that's really been an advantage in your artwork? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's again, what when you train in the dojo, it's okay to make mistakes. That's what you're there for. Same, yeah. with, same within the studio. Um, you're there to make mistakes, and mistakes are usually where you grow the most. Uh, yeah. Your successes are, uh, are nice, but uh, often you get the most growth uh, yeah. when you fail. <laughs> so uh, I think Kim's got a little bit of a barbecue going for us, uh, and I'm pretty hungry. That's let's, great. Uh, yeah, me too. Yeah, let's, uh, let's go get some food. Okay, great. What a great day. This trip has exceeded every expectation I had. I've met lots of talented people and seen some really inspiring art. From the students of U of H to the incredible work I've seen here on Maui, there's no doubt the inspiration I found here will stay with me always.